Time for your morning rush. Today, a specialized team for large wildland fires will take over command of the Three Rivers fire that's doubled in size. Backup crews arrived yesterday, making the team of firefighters surpass 200. Crews got some relief thanks to some rain and snow on the mountains. Some evacuation orders have been lifted, but those living near the Lincoln National Forest are still being told they can't go home. Erica. And speaking of that fire, we are seeing some showers this morning and fairly good conditions for firefighting. And through the day today, we will see that chance for showers. By tonight, we're looking at rain and mix and fairly light winds. And by tomorrow, the winds are going to pick back up, but we will see that chance for rain continuing through our Thursday. The Bernalillo County DA says that a murder could have been avoided if a teen had been forced to stay in jail. Devin Munford is accused of shooting and killing a man on Friday. DA Raul Torres says that his office tried to keep Munford behind bars until trial in a previous case. The judge, Clara Moran, ruled that the ankle monitor and the court supervision would keep the community safe. The CDC is relaxing its guidelines on wearing masks outdoors. Fully vaccinated people can now go without a mask while exercising outdoors, attending small gatherings, and dining outdoors at restaurants. Officials still recommend wearing masks at crowded outdoor events like concerts and small indoor gatherings where unvaccinated people are present. And state health officials are planning to announce details about the updated CDC mask guidelines at a news conference today. Human Services Secretary Dr. David Scrace says that they are looking to see whether the newly updated guidelines make sense for New Mexico. For the city of Santa Fe, though, which had its own mask ordinance, they revised it so that it will either match the state's rules or the CDC's, whichever is stricter. Erica. Here's a look at the drop off forecast for this morning. Temperatures in the low 40s, a lot cooler than yesterday at this time, so be sure to grab those extra layers and even a rain jacket as you're sending the kids off. The family of a girl who was kidnapped and murdered is one step closer to getting her proper headstone. In 2016, 11-year-old Ashlyn Mike and her 9-year-old brother were abducted in Shiprock. The boy was let go. Ashlyn was assaulted and killed. Five years later, and she's yet to get a headstone, a friend has set up a GoFundMe page to help the family cover the costs. Traffic at the Sunport is on the rebound as more people start to feel comfortable traveling once again. Airlines are starting to bring back direct flights that they had suspended during the pandemic, including to Austin and Las Vegas. Officials say the traffic is still about half of what it was in 2019, but it's about 10 times the rate of what it was last year. Albuquerque's mayor is highly encouraging Albuquerque citizens to apply for city jobs, even if they are not ready to return work in person. City departments are struggling to fill positions. The mayor says they will need to bolster the workforce so that there are people working in these departments as the city emerges from the pandemic. All eyes are on CYFD this morning for information that can no longer be seen. House Republicans say that the agency is using an encrypted messaging app called Signal, in which messages can be deleted. CYFD's secretary says they are not hiding anything. House Republicans are calling on the Attorney General and the State Auditor to investigate if the agency is violating the inspection of the Public Records Act. You could soon spend the night in a one of a kind Albuquerque home. From the outside, the house looks like any other home. On the inside, though, it's a masterpiece that took years to make. There's a unique light display, other pieces of art, murals, and a creative dining room. The new owners have big plans and want the public to check it out. The house is on the market for $265,000. A New Mexico man who saved his community from a wildfire is asking for the public's help. 53-year-old Brett Burton sprung into action on Saturday it's when he heard of the Paradise Loop fire. Well, he hooked up hoses and then ran toward the flames. He was able to keep the fire at bay, but when he got home, he made a tough discovery. Recovering, he's now recovering from second and third degree burns on his feet. In the meantime, his daughter has now set up a GoFundMe. One lucky New Mexican, New Mexican is almost $10.5 million richer. That's after a trip to Las Vegas. The South Point Casino reports that someone from our state got lucky at the Mega Bucks slot machine. We don't know who hit the jackpot or who that winner is, but the casino says that wager was only $5. Wow. All right, the deadline for Americans to get the more secure real ID has been delayed. The Department of Homeland Security extended, extended the deadline from October 1st until May 3rd of 2023. DHS blamed the coronavirus pandemic for making it harder for states to issue compliant licenses. Only 43% of Americans have the real ID. Erica. All right, let's get a look at the morning drive. The maps are looking good, all green, no accidents or slowdowns. And here's a look at I-40 West at Carlisle. We're looking at light volumes on the roads, and everything's moving along freely. Topes fans, get excited. Tickets for the upcoming season go on sale today. Starting at 10 a.m., you can buy the tickets to the first 12 games in May. Tickets are going to be uh, limited and sold on a monthly basis. The first game will be next Thursday against the Sugarland Texas Skeeters. Time now for the five facts. At number five, a New Mexico man who saved his community from a wildfire is in need of help this morning after suffering severe burns to his feet. 
Brett Burton sprung into action on Saturday when he heard about the Paradise Loop fire near his Edgewood home. Well, he hooked up hoses and then ran toward the flames until the crews were able to get there and fight it. And when he got home, he discovered that he had severely burned his feet, which will keep him out of work for weeks. His daughter has now set up a GoFundMe. Number two, now all eyes are on CYFD this morning for information that can no longer be seen. House Republicans are calling for an investigation into CYFD, accusing the department of making messages between its employees disappear by using an encrypted messaging app called Signal. CYFD's secretary is coming to their defense, saying that they are not hiding any information that's considered public record. They're just protecting confidential information. And at number three, we're expecting rain showers today, so here's how that forecast pans out. Looking at our best chance for showers in the metro after 12 o'clock this afternoon and through the evening. Number two, in just hours, the state's top doctors are set to hold a briefing on if New Mexico will follow the CDC's new guidance and ease up on restrictions for wearing masks outdoors, according to the new recommendations. Fully vaccinated people can go without a mask while exercising outdoors, attending small gatherings, and dining outdoors. Officials still recommend masks at crowded, setting out, crowded settings outdoors. And at number one, the Three Rivers fire in the Lincoln National Forest is now up to 12,000 acres in size, and that's double from yesterday. More than 200 firefighters are battling the blaze burning in southern New Mexico with another crew taking over today. And while crews got some relief yesterday thanks to some rain and snow on the mountains, they are still facing challenging terrain. Some evacuation orders have been lifted, but people living closer to the Lincoln National Forest are still not being allowed to go home.